I had three chairs in my house. One for solitude, two for friendship, three for society. One for solitude. for friendship. chairs in my house, one for solitude, two for friendship, three for society. When visitors came in larger and unexpected numbers, there was but the third chair for them all, but they generally economized the room by standing up. But there are many fine things which we cannot say if we have to shout, both public and private, and yet we often parted without being aware that we had come very near to one another. In my house, we were so near that we could not begin to hear. We could not speak low enough to be heard, as when you throw two stones into calm water, so near that they break each other's undulations. If we are merely loquacious and loud talkers, then we can afford to stand very near together, cheek by jowl, and feel each other's breath. But if we speak reservedly and thoughtfully, we want to be farther apart, that all animal heat and moisture may have a chance to evaporate. We would enjoy the most intimate society with that in each of us which is without or above being spoken to. We must not only be silent, the bullet of your thought must have overcome its lateral and ricochet motion and fallen into its last and steady course before it reaches the ear of the hearer, else it may plow out again through the side of his head. Our sentences wanted room to unfold and form their columns in the interval. Individuals, like nations, must have suitable broad and natural boundaries, even a considerable neutral ground between them. I have found it a singular luxury to talk across the pond to a companion on the opposite side. In my house, we were so near that we could not begin to hear. I could not but notice some of the peculiarities of my visitors. Girls and boys and young women generally seemed glad to be in the woods. They looked in the pond and at the flowers and improved their time. Men of business, even farmers, thought only of solitude and employment and of the great distance in which I dwelt from something or other. And though they said that they loved a ramble in the woods occasionally, it was obvious that they did not. Restless, committed men, whose time was all taken up in getting a living or keeping it. But there are many fine things which we cannot say if we have to shout, both public and private, 
and yet we often parted without being aware that we had come very near to one another. The bullet of your thought must have overcome its lateral and ricochet motion and fallen into its last and steady course before it reaches the ear of the hearer, else it may plow out again through the side of his head. Also, our sentences...